Today I've got a quick fix for an issue with the platformer tutorial series that popped up if you migrated your project to Godot version 3.1. Don't worry, it'll be quick and easy, I promise. What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. So, I'm a little late on this, but I found out that a change was made in the new Godot version 3.1 that broke the platformer tutorial series game as it was left off after part 18. I could go ahead and explain it to you, but I think it'll just be quicker to show it to you. So over here, what you see is I've just migrated the platformer tutorial series, um, again, as it was when it left off in part 18, the last part in the series, and now I'm using version 3.1. So let's go ahead and run the game. So here we are running around our game. Everything looks pretty normal. So we're going to knock down this guy. Run. Okay, so you guys all saw that, right? Let's try it again. So even though this enemy is dead, I'm supposed to be able to run right through him. But for whatever reason, his uh, collision box is still enabled. And even though he's dead, he's got the ability to kill my player if I touch it. So why exactly is this happening? This, this is not right. Right? One more time. Yeah, something's wrong here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our code. We'll get back into the... Uh, what we want is the enemy here. And then we'll jump into the enemy script. Okay. So we've been using the uh, dead function here to disable the collision shape. Right? If... Uh, you're not familiar, you don't remember, or um, if you just haven't gotten there yet, um, then I'll just explain it to you. But uh, this line over here, collision shape 2 dsabled equals true. Right, so this used to work, but it doesn't work anymore in version 3.01. So why is that? Well, from what I understand, the method that I used to disable the collision shape, this, this right here, was actually never supposed to work the way that it did and was kind of considered a bug on its own because it would cause you to be able to have a physics property be set to two different values in the same frame so you would uh... the collision shape would be enabled to true you'd be in a frame moving your thing you'd collide and then right after you collide you'd say that the collision shape is disabled so in the same frame you'd have it enabled and disabled when you should really be waiting till the next frame to disable the shape or uh, or something like that. Uh, that at least that's how I understand it but in any case this is what you're gonna need to do to fix it now we've already established that this line here isn't gonna do us any good so let's go let's just go ahead and quickly comment it out instead of deleting it um, this uh, project is gonna be up on uh, my Patreon page for download um, if you all want to get it later so at least uh, you'll have some reference instead of uh, I just deleted and you never knew that it was there you'll see it was there we commented it out in fact let's go ahead put another comment over here let's just say uh, the following line does not work in version 3.1 all right let's do that okay now on to the fix so what we need to do is we do a clean shape 2d dot set underscore deferred we're gonna say disabled true okay so just by looking at this you can see you, you can probably guess what we're doing, right? We're doing the exact same thing as this over here. But what's different about this, right? We see this set deferred method that we're using on the collision shape. Now what this is going to do is instead of processing it inside of the, the, uh, the physics frame, it's going to wait until the physics frame is finished or it's going to wait until idle time before it decides to... Um, set this this property here right over here we just directly access the property with with a dot dot disabled and we said make it equal to true over here you declare or uh, you specify the property as a string so this one is disabled so 
we need to make it a string. That's why we've got the double quotes around it. And then we just say that this property is going to be set to this value, which is true. Now we should be able to run our game and things should be working correctly again. Let's just do a quick save and then run it. All right, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and shoot down this guy over here. See if we can run through him. All right. Working great. Let's go ahead and grab this. Um, let's try it out on a couple more of these goofy little enemies over here just to make sure. That one's good. That one's good. Right? So they're they're all pretty much good. Even this huge guy over here, right? I can jump all over him. So everything is working like it was before now. Um, I just wanted to say that when I first stumbled upon this issue and solution, I really wasn't quite convinced that this was the best way to fix the issue as I had already been thinking about other workarounds. But after doing a little more research online, it seems that this is a viable and non-hacky solution as one of the major good old contributors chimed in on this one and actually said that this is how it should be done. Well, I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's coming up next. Also, the sprite source code and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is going to be available for download on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link will be in the description. Thanks again to everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.